Mine is online. Mine is online. Okay. Uh, usually when I plug it into YouTube, it'll say like, you know, 12 minutes until it uploads. Then it'll, so it'll upload and then it'll, it'll take about 10 more minutes to actually get everything out into the site. This one, it'll be like 52, 53, 47 minutes um, until it uploads. Okay. Um, let's talk about... Um, Maybe that one gets done last. Do what? Maybe that one gets done last. <laughs> um, let's talk about plantation slavery. I, I'm kind of jumping around a little bit, I guess, but plantation slavery... Um, first of all, by, by the Civil War, by 1860, I mean the war starts in 1861, but by 1860, why don't we use 1860 as our cutoff, by the way, not 61? Does anyone know? It's a nice even number. It is. It's also, <laughs> the, it's also the year that Lincoln's elected, right? That, that's why seven of the states leave. I know that too. But mostly it's because it's an even number. <laughs> um, four million slaves are in America. Um, there were about, actually about as many free slaves in the South as there was in the North. Not many. Also, has anyone seen Django Unchained in here? Uh, yes. And one thing that in Django Unchained you see is that there actually is a social hierarchy amongst the slaves, right? There are field, there are field hands, right? People that work in the field. And there are house slaves. Which one has a higher social uh, status. House slave. house slave, right? The closer you are to the, the master, the higher your social status amongst the slaves. Also, oftentimes the more you're hated amongst the slaves. Um, what Daniel was pretending to be in when he was going to his wife's house, what was he pretending to be? Um, he was pretending to be a... Um, a slaver, right? A, a black person who, who trades in black slaves. And that's considered just the worst thing you can be, right? But the highest, But socially, in the, well, in the view of whites, socially the highest. Um, now, that if you've seen Django, and you can remember anyway, if you were a black person who did trade slaves, did whites see you as an equal? No. Never. But they saw you as better than a field hand. Now, a field hand probably was, oftentimes might be jealous of a, of a house slave, but also, you know, because the job is easier, right? Instead of working in a field all day, you're, you know, pulling out chairs and giving them tea. But you're also hated because you're seen as more of a traitor. This is the really, really weird thing, and Malcolm X talks about this some, and when you read Black Like Me, you'll really see it. It's this weird thing that the more white you act, the more you're both hated and envied. In fact, one reason, and Malcolm talks about this, remember one reason why his father loved him more? Because he appeared more white. But his father also hated white people. But his mother also treated him worse. But she appeared more white. Right. So... Yeah, so what we tend to see is a, re a weird social hierarchy. One thing that many slave owners were also worried about was um, being poisoned by the house slaves. In fact, the biggest way that slaves actually protested was not by running away. It was actually by doing things like working slower, breaking their tools, you know, things like that. In fact, there's that stereotype that black people are lazy. That's a stereotype that whites have perpetuated. Where do you think that was originally started? On slave plantations where black people purposely worked slower as a way to protest being a slave. Does that make sense? Um, it's ironic that white people would complain about a slave not working so hard, right? If you're a slave, why would you want to work hard? What's, what's going to happen for you if you work harder? You get to keep being a slave. Um, so that's one reason why, for instance, slave owners might have a taster. Why are you going to have a taster? To make sure they're not poisoned. Right? Um, the slave system was really, really odd. It was, it was called a peculiar institution because it was 
a peculiar institution relative to other um, types of relationships. What about the movie in Young Back to Django? Whenever they have the slaves, they're like fighting. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about, like, in the house? Yeah, that's, I, I, actually, to be fair, I, I couldn't watch all of that. That was awful. That was awful. And I, I don't know how much, I don't know how much of that was common. Like, Leonardo DiCaprio's character was, he was true evil, right? Now, to be fair, he was a great actor. He was great at being true. I mean, he's a great actor. And actually, I'm not sure who I hated more, Sam Jackson's character or Leonardo DiCaprio's character, right? What movie? Django. Django Unchained. Um, do you what? If you haven't seen it, it's as a movie, it's very, very good. It's not an easy movie to stomach at certain parts. Um, there's a part where Leonardo DiCaprio, who is a large plantation owner, um, for sport has two slaves fight each other to the death, who are friends with each other. And if you don't do it, he's going to kill you. And the part where he has the guy killed by dogs. And a part where he has a guy eaten by vicious dogs, right? Um, you know who made the movie, right? Uh, Tarantino. This is his second. This is his second movie where he's taken. The first one was the Holocaust, right? In, in, uh, in *Glorious Bastards*, and this one, where he basically has changed history to have a to have uh, people who were screwed over in famous fashion actually come back and lay um, um, a very very. Um, hard hand on those who oppress them. Um, I had somebody ask me, was Inglourious Bastards uh, real? Is that accurate? I was like, yes. In reality, people blew up Hitler in a movie theater during the Holocaust. Um, Django Unchained is not an accurate thing. Although, there, you see the SNL skit called Jesus Unchained. Unchained, D-J-E-S-U-S, -S, and it was Jesus rising up against uh, Pontius Pilate and the Jews. <laughs> um, it was it was not overtly uh, pro Christian, but it was it was uh, uh, making fun of Jesus and our Django and Chain. If you haven't seen, by the way, a Tarantino movie, specifically if you haven't seen Reservoir Dogs or Pulp Fiction, you should. That's right? an awesome movie. Um, Pulp Fiction. Today, violence in films is sort of stylized, right? It's sort of like artistic the way people do that. Um, that starts with Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction is really good. In fact, it probably should have won Best Picture. It was a year four ago up won Best Picture. Um, it is a good movie. Although, it's a good movie because it's fun and great and feels good in your heart. But Tarantino's Pulp Fiction changed movies. Right? It changed people did movies. Or you watch Reservoir Dogs. Have you seen Reservoir Dogs? It's black and white. Every single person with a speaking character, with a speaking line, what happens to them? They all die. Everyone who has a speaking role dies. Tell Mr. Payne. Steve Buscemi, he gets up, he gets the diamonds and he runs out of the warehouse at the end. No, I thought he died in the end. He doesn't die. Man, I watched it when I was your age. He did, I could have swore he died. He doesn't die. Okay. Okay, other than Steve Buscemi. I do like the thing where he's like, why Mr. Payne? Yeah. Um, so, anyway. Um, let's talk about... Um, Let's talk, hold on, put on the burdens. What, if you're a slave, are you going to be educated? No. No, why not? Because education is power. Education is power. This is a way to be pushed down. Remember, part of the brutalization that is the slave system wasn't just the physical and the economic repression, it's also the psychological, right? That you are told and convinced that you are not only inferior, but everyone like you. Your mom and your dad and your kids are inferior. And that is a harsh psychological pill to swallow. And it tends to make its way into African American culture to the point whereby 1954, when Brown versus Board comes around, part of it was trying to overcome the inferiority complex that many African Americans had as a result of slavery. I mean, if you're told that you're dumb over and over and over, you're going to start believing you're dumb. It takes a very, very strong person to not do that, right? Um, okay. Okay, let's talk about some of the um, revolts. This is scaring the bejesus out of white people. Now, we had already talked about Stono Rebellion in the colonial era, right? 
of Solo Rebellion is South Carolina slaves trying to go to Florida. Because we're at the time, Florida was not American, it was Spanish. I see, it was British, not British, it was Spanish. Gabriel Proser was a, uh, a Virginian slave. He was a blacksmith. Um, and he planned a military revolt to up. Um, he was a blacksmith? It was a, a, a black blacksmith. He was a slave blacksmith. Um, remember, I said that a lot of um, plantations had small little factories on the site. And he, you know, he worked in one of those. And he was going to recruit people and try to um, um, start a violent revolt. He actually got this found out before it happened. And he um, and 26 others were hanged. Similar with Denmark Vesey. Um, this was in South Carolina also. And up until this point was the largest slave revolt and a slave actually told on him. And it was in Charleston who were, that he was planning a violent revolt. He was told, and he and 30 others were hanged publicly. Why do you publicly hang them if you're a slave owner? You're setting an example, right? And you leave them out so I seize you too. Nat Turner's revolt is by far the most violent. 1831... Um, he's a Virginian, and he and many other slaves, 60, um, slaughtered 60 people, slaughtered them in this revolt, many of them women and children, um, on their way to capturing an armory. He was finally put down, and he and over 100 people were hanged. But if you're a white slave owner, and you're already fearful of blacks, right, because Proser, Vesey, Denmark, um, sorry, Denmark Vesey, Turner's Revolt. This happens about once every 10 or 15 years, but white people stay scared forever, right? They're fearful of this. And the thought of black people killing white kids and women made slave owners that much more violent towards their slaves, right? Forcing them forcing them um, into a much more rigid existence. As whites became more paranoid, um, this comes along with the abolitionist movement. So now, southern whites are like, these northerners think that what we're doing, remember the Second Great Awakening is going on now, right? So now they're seeing slavery as evil. The North sees it as evil. You're being called evil for what you're doing. And these revolts are happening, and you start to fight back. And we're going to talk about ways that the, that the South fought back. Um, one way, for instance, was you could have no abolitionist propaganda in the South. They were not, it was illegal for a postman to deliver abolitionist material in the South by the 1840s. For a long time, the South actually had quite a few anti-slave societies. They didn't talk about it. But as the Second Great Awakening cemented the sort of this is evil type of thing, then the South fought back. Is that including the Kentucky slaves? Yeah, um, it's Kentucky slaves. Now obviously the further south you go, um, the relationship between the slaves became a little bit more, uh, probably a little bit crueler. Now were, were there horrible slave owners in Kentucky? Absolutely. Um, um, but the relationship between slaves and the landowner also sometimes depended on the number of slaves they had. Let us say if a family had two slaves, violently hurting a slave or killing a slave was much more personal than if you had 400 slaves and you killed one to make an example. You see the difference? Um, and since the South just had southern slave system tended to have larger plantations that had more slaves, it was less personal. I was asking if it's illegal uh, propaganda. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, it depends. I'm not 100%. I mean, I'm pretty sure in Lexington and Louisville you could have that. But the further south you went, the more it was um, enforced. probably enforced. That's a really good question. And I guess my best answer is I don't know. But my best guess is probably that was okay since okay. Um, it depended on where. Um, Can I stop this? 
for y'all. Yeah, 